My brothers and sisters, today I want to speak about our dress code. I want to speak about clothes. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about clothes in the Holy Quran, in the Ahadith? What is mentioned? How should we come to the masjid? How should we be dressed? If King Charles was to invite us, okay, you're going to be OBE, you're going to be MBE, how, how will we go to King Charles? My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of all kings. Maliki Yawmiddin. You are in the house of Maliki Yawmiddin, the master of the day of judgment. The scholars, they say, Allah Rabbul Alameen, he is the king of this world too. He is the master of this world too. The scholars, they say, in this world, there are many masters. There are many kings. But in the hereafter, there's only going to be one master. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, when we go to school, we have our uniform. Or when we go to work, there's a certain dress code. We go to weddings, we go to bed. But sometimes what happens is, we get lazy and we come to the masjid with our nighties on. Even if you look at the Kaaba, there's a ghilaf on the Kaaba. To be covered, this is a sign of honor, sign of sharaf. But if you going to come to the masjid, and especially if your uh, private parts are going to be exposed, this is not a sign of honor. For your clothes to come off, this is a sign of immodesty. And this is a type of immodesty and also humiliation as well. So my brothers, with regards to the preconditions of salah, they are outside prayer, but the validity of our prayer depends on them. One precondition of salah is for your body to be clean, your clothes to be clean. The place where you are praying, that has to be clean as well. One precondition is it has to be time for prayer. You have to be facing qibla. You have to have the right intention for the right prayer. Some people, they say takbir e tahrima they, they add this in the precondition. Some add the takbir e tahrima the first takbir in the obligatory acts in salah. My brothers, one precondition of salah is that your sitta, your private parts, they have to be hidden. So for women, their hands, their feet, their face, they are not in their sitta. But apart from that, they have to be covered. And for men, according to Imam Abu Hanifa, under our belly button and this, this kneecap, it is also included. So this has to be covered. So what is happening, my brothers? Why am I speaking about this? I don't see it because I'm facing the wall here. There's no one ahead of me. But there's some brothers in front of them. There are brothers who have tight jeans on. And when they go into Urku, when they go into Sajda, what happens? The place where the sun doesn't shine it is exposed before them. And these brothers don't want to see someone else's backside. So this is why I'm speaking about this. This is part of the preconditions of Salah. It is shut in your Salah. Your, your private parts, they have to be hidden. Also, apart from this, even to wear a hat, my brothers, the brothers that are not wearing the hat at this time, to wear a hat is sunnat e muakkada in salah, according to Imam Abu Hanifa. You are following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the scholars, they say, if there are hats near you, and even then you don't wear a hat, then you are going against the sunnah. You are opposing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, if there's a problem, you can't wear a hat, then it's not disliked. But just out of laziness, you don't want to wear a hat, you don't want to spoil your fancy hair style, or your, you've combed your hair, you don't want to spoil that, then, you know, if there's no reason, then this is makroom. I give you one proof that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to keep his blessed head covered, especially during prayers. And even apart from that, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was talking about the rank of the martyrs. And he looked up at 
their rank is going to be so high. وَرَفَعَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ رَأْسَهُ حَتَّى وَقَعَتْ قَلَنْسُوَتُهُ قَلَنْسُوَتُهُ This قَلَنْسُوَ is a hat in Arabic. So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم raised his blessed head and his hat fell to the floor. So my brothers, this is from among the preconditions of Salah to cover your private parts in Salah. So let's look at what the Quran says about clothes. What happened? What do we learn from the story of Adam Islam and our mother Hawa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ That I created you all. So the Mufassirin, they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam Islam. And then we all come from Adam alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions the story when uh, the angels, they were told to do sajda to Adam alayhi salam. Iblis didn't do sajda. And remember, Iblis wasn't an angel. This is in the Quran. He was from the jinn. He didn't do sajda. So he was asked, so what prevented you from doing sajda when you were ordered? He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from mati on the earth. So Iblis was told, okay, you can't be in heaven and exercising kibar and pride. So leave, leave. فخرج إنك من Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that you are humiliated. So he said, give me time until the day people are resurrected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you have this, you have this time. So he then says, that, look, I'm in throne of heaven and uh, because of all this, I'm going to come in front of these humans. I'm going to attack them from the back. I'm going to attack them from their right, from their left as well. You won't find most of them being grateful to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to him, Ukhruj minha madhuman madhura. Get out of here in, in a bad state, being accursed. And whoever follows you, I will fill Jahannam with all of you. So here, my brothers, some of the points that the scholars mentioned, they say, that shaitan, he made a dua. But in the Quran, Allah says, وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي الضَّلَالِ So the question here is, can the dua of a disbeliever be accepted? So the scholars, they say that in the dunya, yes, but not in the hereafter. One question that the scholars raise is, how is shaitan able to speak to Allah with so much courage? The scholars, they say that due to becoming a caste, there was a veil in front of him and this hid the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him. And this is why he was able to talk like this. So, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيَمْ He said, I'm going to come from here, from there. Shaitan, they attack humans from different places. This is the meaning here. And in one hadith is mentioned that they run in humans, they flow in humans. Shayateen, like blood, majrat ta. So let's continue with this story. Waya Adam Muskun Anta Wazaujukal Jannata. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says to Adam Islam that you and your wife you stay in heaven. Fakula min haithu shituma. You can eat from wherever. Wala taqraba hadihi shajarata fatakuna bin walimi. Don't go near this tree. So here. Adam salam, he was given the names of different things, qualities, specialities, effect of them, what's harmful, what's beneficial, the creation. And Adam salam, knew the names of all these. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told the angels, But what did the angels say? They said they were against the invention of humans. They actually, before humans existed, the angels thought that they were the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they knew about the blood spilling from Lohi Mahfuz. Uh, or because the jinn, they were spilling blood already. So here, there's a big, there's a big 
message for us here that look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was talking to the angels. What is this? So the scholars, they say, this is to educate us, to consult as well, with those that are under us. Or oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to see the response of the angels. So remember this, this sajda that the angels did, it was not sajda of worship, it was sajda of respect. Sajda of worship is only allowed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even we learn from the story of Yusuf when he saw the 11 stars, the sun, the moon prostrating, they did that. 11 brothers were the 11 stars. And, and, and the sun and the moon, that was basically his stepmom and, and his father. So this was also sajda of respect. But in this sharia, even sajda of respect is not allowed. Once Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sahaba were there and this camel was coming running towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the sahaba, they got worried that what is this gonna do? And this camel came and it did sajda to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sahaba, they said, we are more worthy of doing sajda to you. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, this is not allowed. So also, we learn that Shaitan, for many, many years, he was in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but look what happened. So this is why we should always pray for Khatima bin Iman. This is a beautiful dua that we make when someone passes away. Allahumma man ahyaytahu minna fa ahlihi ala islam wa man tawafaytahu minna fa tawafahu ala iman So we are praying that Ya Allah allow us to live as Muslims and grant us death upon iman as well. So let's continue with this uh, with these verses from Surah A'raf. What happened? Fa waswasa lahum ash-shaytanu Shaytan, he whispered and what, what did he do and what happened because of this? The clothes of Adam and Islam and our mother Hawa, they came off. And they were looking at each other's private parts. He made things up. He said that, look, if you eat from this tree, then you will have angel-like qualities. You won't need to eat, you won't need to drink, you won't need to sleep. And you will be enjoying the bounties of heaven forever. He was swearing. He was saying, Inni lakuma lamina nasihim. I swear, I'm your well wisher. Fadallahuma bi gurur. And through deception, he got them inclined towards this. And what happened when they ate from that tree? Their clothes came off. And what happened? They started covering themselves with the leaves from Jannah. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that did I not tell you not to go close to this tree? Did I not tell you in the shaitan mubin? The shaitan is your open enemy. Fatalaqa Adamu min Rabbihi kalimati. So this is mentioned in the first para. Fatalaqa Adamu min Rabbihi kalimati. Fataba alayhi. So there was some kalimat that Adam alayhi salam said, and his his repentance was accepted. What were these kalimat? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِ Beautiful dua. What we learn from this dua also is that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that forgives our sins. In other religions, some people, they go to the priest or the father and they say, get my sins forgiven, you forgive my sins. Here, we learn, even Musa made a similar dua, so we need to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I, I remember there was this brother who studied in my madrasa, he was from France, and they used to ask him, when anyone used to ask him, where are you from brother? He used to say, I'm from heaven. <laughs> and the reason is because he says that my parents, Adam al Islam and mother Hawa, they were living in heaven. So. This is the way Shaitan, he, he, through deception, he got our mother and our father inclined towards this tree. You probably heard the hadith that Adam salam and Musa salam they had this discussion and Musa salam said, you are the father of mankind and we were living in heaven, we should have been living in heaven and uh, what did you do? 
and the Adam alayhi salam, he says that you are Kaleemullah, Allah blessed you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly communicated. But Adam alayhi salam, he says that look, this is, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he wills, this is the maslihat of Allah, this is hikmat of Allah, this is all written, and, and this happened. So, how was shaitan able to communicate with Adam Islam if he was exiled from heaven? The scholars they say either whisper, waswasa, or he came in different form. He came in the form of a snake, maybe. So this is all mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, okay, once Adam Islam and our mother Hawa they ate. That's say, okay, you go now, you're going to the dunya and you're going to be enemies of one another. And look, they didn't take long, did they? It was the son of Adam, السلام, he killed his brother. Yeah. So we see this in the dunya, we have enemies. You're going to live in this dunya, it's going to be, you're going to be here and you're going to benefit for a certain time. قَالَ فِيهَا تَحْيَوْنَ وَفِيهَا تَمُوتُونَ وَمِنْهَا تُخْرَجُونَ You're going to live here, you're going to die here, and you're going to come out of this, this. You're going to come out. Similar to the verse, مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَعْرَةَ نُخْرِجُكُمْ You're going to come out of this earth as well. So my brothers, what we learn from this story is that for clothes to be taken away from you, this is a sign of humiliation. So we need to cover ourselves. This is a sign of honor. Like the Kaaba. The Kaaba has a ghilaf over it. We need to make sure that we cover ourselves. Especially when we come to the masjid, we shouldn't be dressed in such a way that we go down to Ruku, we go down in Sajda, and our sitter, our backside opens up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya Bani Adama, Qad anzalna alaykum libasa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, O oh, sons of Adam, we've sent down libas, clothes, and through these clothes, what happens is, you are able to cover yourselves, and you are able to adorn yourselves. وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ And the libas, the, the clothing of taqwa, this is the best. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Ya Bani Adama, La Make sure that shaitan, he doesn't go on to mislead you. Kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannati. Like he took your, your parents out of jannah. Yanzi'u anhuma libasahuma. He took their clothes off. Liyuriyahuma sawatihima. They were looking at each other's private parts. Innahu yaraakum huwa wa qabiluhu min haythu la tarawnahum. They see you, the shayateen, they see you from different places, but you don't see them. Inna ja'alna shayateen awliya alladina la yu'minun. We made shayateen the friends of the disbelievers. Here, the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that when they do some immodesty, they say that we found our forefathers doing this. Now, if you found your forefathers doing something, it doesn't mean that it's permissible now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 31, Ya Bani Adama, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. So we're talking about clothes here. This is the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O sons of Adam, take your zina, take your adornment at the time of masjid, at the time of namaz. This is what's meant here at the time of namaz. And eat and drink and don't go over the top. Allah Rabbul Alameen, He doesn't like people that do this off. So here, from these verses, we learn the benefits of clothes here. And uh, the first attack of shaitan was to take the clothes off humans. And today, similar is happening. After Iman, the first obligation is to hide our private parts. I remember my teacher, whenever he used to be sunny, he used to say, I wish it doesn't be hot. Because what's going to happen when it's going to be hot? People are going to take their clothes off. But when it's cold, people, they cover themselves. Prophet said, when you wear clothes, praise Allah. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
for giving you these clothes through which you conceive yourselves and you adorn yourselves. And when you get new clothes, gift your old clothes to the needy. And if you do this, inshallah, aap Allah ki panah mein aa You will be in the responsibility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of these philosophers, they say that humans, they were initially naked and then they invented clothes. This is not true. Clothes of piety. وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ Clothes of piety, they are the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So this is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing the disobedience of Allah. Performing good deeds that conceal our faults and our weakness. So when we wear clothes, we need to make sure that our clothes, they shouldn't be tight, we shouldn't be boasting, we shouldn't be proud, we should be humble, and, and we should especially try to follow the sunnah of the Prophet And regarding uh, shaitan, this is something that they have this power that the shayateen, they can see us, but we can't see them. But remember, we have one power as well. And what is that? Repentance. If we go and we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we make istighfar, Allah Rabbul Alameen, He will forgive our sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that, وَإِذَا فَعْلُوا فَاحِشَةً So what's meant by this is, what's this immodest act? The disbelievers, they used to do tawaf being naked. And they used to say, we found our predecessors doing tawaf like this. And, and this is what the men used to do during the day and the women, they used to do tawaf at night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, say to them, قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَى Verily, Allah doesn't order this immodesty, fahsha, these shameful acts. So regarding clothes, it's mentioned that even our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wear this beautiful cloak which was worth 1,000 dirhams. Imam Abu Hanifa, Hazrat Hassan radiallahu anhu, all these predecessors of ours, they used to wear beautiful clothes and they used to say, Inna Allah jameel yuhibbul jamal. Verily Allah is jameel and he loves jamal. He loves beauty. Imam Malik, someone had taken it upon themselves to give Imam Malik clothes every day, 365 days of the year. Someone used to give Imam Malik clothes, a pair of clothes, and Imam Malik, he would just wear them once, and then he would gift them to the needy. So he would just wear the pair of clothes once. So my brothers, this is something that we need to take into consideration. We should wear good clothes, inshallah. Allah, Allah he has given us wealth, we should be able to see them as well. So if Allah has given us wealth and we wear decent clothes, this is a form of shukr as well. This is us basically thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us, but even then, you know, we're not wearing decent clothes and this is like a type of nashukri. This is a type of ungratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we need to remember, especially in the masjid, my brothers. We need to make sure that we are following the commandments of Islam. And we need to make sure that we wear decent clothes. I know some brothers, they, in, they keep in their car, they keep a jaya namaz, sajjada. Yeah? You need to come to the masjid, keep a jubba as well. Then these jubbas, soap, mashallah, they don't even get creased as well. The, 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 the kapra is so good. So if you can have like a jubba, in your, in your car, that will be wonderful, inshallah. Or else, what's going to happen? You're going to come to the masjid. One of the brothers was saying, I see brothers reading namaz and they've got both of their hands, they're putting their pants up. They're putting their pants up. Yeah? If you're going to be in namaz and you're going to be doing amal al kathir, this is amal al kathir when you're using two hands. If someone looks at you, they're going to be thinking that you're not in namaz. So we won't be worried about this if we've got a thawb in our cars, but if we wear this, at the time of the month. When we come to the masjid, we should wear decent clothes, my brothers. And we shouldn't wear those clothes. We shouldn't be coming in our 90s. We shouldn't be wearing those clothes that we don't go outside in, or we don't go to someone's house in. For example, one sheikh, he mentions that uh, we had to go after Fajr to someone's house, and one of the brothers that was accompanying us, 
he said that, uh, okay, hold on, let me change my clothes. So the sheikh said, you can read namaz in them clothes, but you can't go to someone's house in those clothes. That shouldn't be the case. This is this light. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quickly finishing with the last verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that, Ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O sons of Adam, take your adornment at the time of namaz, wear good clothes. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا Allah then says that eat and drink but don't go over the top. This was because before Islam, the Arabs, they saw it to be sin to eat good food and to drink good drinks during the days of Hajj. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, you can eat and you can drink. But even when it comes to eating, to eat that much food that will keep you alive, that is false. To eat until you're full up, this is mubah, it's permissible. But to eat after that, that is haram. This is israf. You don't need to eat, but you're still eating. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, avoid eating too much, it will destroy your body. You'll be calling illnesses towards yourself. You'll get lazy. We see this for iftari, we eat so much. We make up for our breakfast our dinner, our supper, our tea, our night food. We eat so much, but then what happens? We become lazy for the Lord. We can't get up. So this shouldn't be the case. Moderation. Mayana Rabi. Iqtisad. Keep in the middle. This will be beneficial. And this way you're away from Israf as well. Also, these are the religious benefits. You've got the health benefits as well. Doctors are saying as well, don't eat at night, you know. And, and basically, 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, don't eat anything during the night. So there was a doctor, I just finished with this, who lived near Harun Rashid. And this doctor, he said to one Muslim person that in the Quran, there's nothing about medicine. So this verse was mentioned. Ulu washrabu wala tusritu. Eat, drink, but don't go over the top. So then this doctor, he said, what about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So he mentioned that even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said as well that stay away from harmful things, from harmful foods and, and drinks. This mi'da, it's bimaniyo ka ghar hai. So he said, you know what, there's nothing to add on that.